This Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my build of the Boron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus from my FormBot kit. Today I'm working on the Z drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So in my last episode, I put together the frame in this segment, I'm going to work on the C drives. I'm hoping to finish this all in one shot, although it looks like there's a lot to do. Right now, in the manual on the C drives, so here's a picture. You can see that the linear rails are in each corner facing each other. And I'm going to start off by putting in the z linear rails now the z linear rails seem to be in good shape with this kit i don't really need to do anything i just need to be careful i don't want to drop the carriage i also don't want to drop the rail now you can see this is the orientation i need the linear rails it's recommending over here that i have three millimeters in between the bottom of the rail extrusion i've printed a little piece to put in the corners so that way, as I'm putting this together, I have the right height. I also have little pieces here to hold the renters centered. So let's go ahead and switch over to my tripod cam and take a look at the parts. So as you can see, we have the frame together. I have my M38 nuts, M3T nuts, and then the MGN9 rails. Now there is an MGN12, so you have to make sure you look through these. Make sure you have the right rails. There's one of those, and there's a total of six of these, which I believe are the Z and the Y, and the 12 is for the X. But we'll get to those steps. So we're going to put those parts here. Here are the parts to hold the rail in place keep it centered and I printed two of those. Now I'm not sure if those came with the printer parts that were part of the kit. I couldn't find them, but that doesn't mean they're not there because there's a billion little parts. But if you go to Voron website under tools, you can find them. I'll show you here in a minute. And lastly, I printed this little piece and what this is going to do is go right here. And then when I put the rail in, that way it keeps the rail height and they should slide. So I should be able to move that out, not have a problem. Maybe it's a little tighter than it needs to be, but that'd be all right. So let me just switch over. Let's take a look at the tool section of the Voron website, and then we'll start putting this together. So I've brought up the Voron website. I'm just gonna hit STLs. So that downloads it. I actually don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go over to the Voron GitHub, go under STL, go down here to tools, and you'll notice that here are the guides. And there's two sets of guides. There's guides for the MGN9 and then MGN12. Eventually, I think I'll print out all these tools so I have them, but for right now, I'm good to go. So let's switch back and let's get those rails installed. Now I'm gonna start in the back corner here. And what I need is approximately 10 T nuts and screws. Let me get those out. And what I'm going to do is do line these up where the top five are going to be pointed in this orientation, bottom five with the hole pointing down. Now, right now, I'm just going to slip these in. Now, these are a bit of a pain in the butt to get in. What I'm going to do is get the first one seated just so you can see it. Use my driver to sort of try to wrestle this in. And it doesn't sit right initially, but I just pull at it, get it to sort of slide in. Of course, it popped out. So, like I said, this is a pain in the butt to get these in struggle with this. What I'm going to do is let me get these in off camera and then I'll come back. So for my next step, I have each of the linear rails came in their own package. So I'm going to carefully remove these from the package. And I want to make sure I leave the little black dots on there for right now because I don't want the carriage to come off. I want to be careful. And one of the things I check 
is if do these feel greasy and how does the slide action go on here? So far, they felt pretty good. If I don't like the feel of them, or you want to just be sure, you can use a microfiber rag to clean these off. Now, if you don't have a microfiber rag, a coffee filter works just as good. In fact, in some cases, a microfiber rag might leave little bits of fiber. And I have a somewhere up here with my printers, I have some coffee filters, and I use them periodically as well. So I'm going to do a switch over, and then let's mount this on the Z-axis. So I've zoomed in a little bit on the axis, and you'll see that the top T-nuts I have pointing up, the bottom one's pointing down. Now what I've been doing is just lining the rail up sort of perpendicular to these, and then sliding the T-nuts down match up the holes. And I'm pretty much doing every other hole. I'm just sliding these down. As you can see, I'm sort of just lining them up. And maybe you can't see enough here to see that I'm lining them up. Let me try moving this back a little bit. Again, just lining these up, doing every other hole. You can see I just slide the T-nuts around. They stick a little bit. They got a I just try and line those up. And so once I have those lined up, what I'm going to do is I put in one screw at the top and bottom, and that way it's sort of just barely held on. And then I will use these pieces to center it and then cinch it down. Now, what I'm going to need to do is one of the holes is here at the bottom. I'm going to take out Put a black piece here and gently lay this down. Then I don't want the carriage to come off the rail. And let me get ready here so I can screw this in. I'm gonna just try. I barely have that in. Do the top one, center in that. Like I said, I just want it barely in. If we look at this. I have my spacer at the bottom, so it's about three meters. Now I'm looking, let me try to fix some of these. I'm just using this Allen key to sort of push the holes so they're centered. Now I'm going to take these pieces and slide that right here. And I'll slide it up towards the top. And so that's holding it straight. Just move this up slightly. Then I want to tighten this in. Now let's take this piece off. Just gonna put it down the bottom here. So now let's tighten the top. And then what I'm gonna do is right about in the middle. I wanna make sure that I'm So now that should be straight. It feels like it's sliding right. So that's good. And then what I'm going to do is put in, again, every other hole. So I'll do that off camera and then come back. So I have everything screwed in nice and tight so I can remove my pieces to make sure the rail is straight can remove my piece for the three millimeters. And the slide seems to go really well. Now I am leaving a little black button up here at the top. I'm leaving that. So that way if I wrestle or move my frame around, I'm not accidentally losing my carriage. So if that happens, then that could break it and bust it. And I, I really don't want to have to fix that. So right now I have this back corner in. What I'm going to do is work on the other corners off camera. Now we just need to remember these all need to face each other. And so let me work on those off camera and I'll be back in a little bit. So I've installed the linear rails 
and I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next step. So let's take a look at the manual. For the next step, it looks like I'm installing the bottom panel. Now, I'm going to turn the frame upside down. So I definitely want to make sure that those carriages are secured. And I put the little dots back in so that way they can't come off the track. Last thing I want, I don't want that carriage to come off the track. If it comes off the track, that's probably going to cause some issues. So flip the frame over and then we'll work on the bottom and install that panel. Now on my panel, I just want to show this, there's a black side and a white side. I'm going to go with the white side up. And then I also need to make sure that notch is in the back. Now, one of the other things I need to do is put my peanuts down in the bottom. And I'm actually going to need the M5 T nuts. Let me get those out and we'll get those installed. I'm going to put the panel aside. And then just want to get these T nuts into the rail. So I have the T nuts in. I want to put my plate back on. And I need to line up the T nuts with the holes. And I'm going to apologize this a little loud because I keep dropping it. Maybe looking at it from the side might be a little easier. What I'm going to do is try to wind these. I want to make sure that the notch. Is at the back. I just got to arrange this one a little bit more. So this notch is at the back. And then we're going to look at the next step in the manual. It's actually pretty simple. We just need to install the DIN rails with M510 button heads. And so those are going to be secured via the T nuts going right through those holes, sort of perpendicular to the to the 2020. So here are my DIN rails. They're going to sit something like this. Basically, again, going perpendicular to the 2020s going across. I have my M520s. I'm sorry, M510s. I'm going to use those to secure the DIN rail down. What I'm doing is lining the holes up. Just screwing those in. Now, the DIN rails are what's holding the bottom plate on. So that's in. So now I've completed that step. So let's keep looking at the manual and see what we got next. Rather than proceed to the next step, I've just realized how long this video is gone. I'm going to pause and then split this and then resume in my next video. So I look forward to talking to you again soon. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks. Have a good Hi, night. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.